Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time to take a look at the stories making headlines across Nigeria on Off The Press. Um, let's begin with the Daily Trust newspaper. It says, federal government loses billions in port revenue over stalled boat service contracts. NPA fails to engage new firms after Intel's role. Authority has no capacity to provide service. The matter is in court, says MPA, and findings show that at least 58 billion naira was lost in 12 months. State assemblies will block FIRS move to amend that law, Akira de Louvaux. Gunmen kill three policemen in Onicha. Set police van on fire. Buhari directs incorporation of NNPC Limited constitutes board. 2023, North won't play second fiddle. That's according to the NEF. Students shot dead. Travelers abducted in Imo. Bandits kill 11 in Sokoto Kebi. What town planners should do to stop flooding in cities and towns? All right, now to the Punch newspapers. Value added tax by states, a joke comment. Um, Masari under fire. Akiri Dulu says, FIRS planned amendment, dead on arrival. It says, VAT collection battle, test for Nigeria's democracy, Lagos tells Katsina governor. And also, free money has made states lazy, Pandef replies Masari on his uh, comments. More states will support us to kill FIRS planned amendment, Akiri Dulu also is speaking. Also on the punch, continuation of strike by doctors, contemptuous, says Ngige. Nigerian politicians in one party says Oni, as it begins seven-day seclusion. Um, NDLE arrest pregnant women and fake soldier stop Canada-Australia-bound drugs. Middle World Forum carpets Abuja hospitals over Milafia's death. And um, also federal government may bar unvaccinated Nigerians from government facilities. Assembly Speaker fumes as gunmen storm Kogi Church service, kill guard, kidnap ex-provost, pastor, and worshipper. And a few others, customers scam banks with fake visas and tickets for Forex. North has the votes, won't accept second position in 2023, says NEF. And um, Nigeria's monthly trade in Bitcoin rises to $44 million. Hmm. Um, I think that, that's all we'll, we'll stop on the punch. On the Guardian newspaper, manufacturers demand for Forex nears $2 billion amid scarcity and weak Naira. Middle-class Nigerians shop for stable dollar as FX crisis continues. Naira in moment of decision trades at 570 Naira to a dollar. 11 bandits killed, three victims rescued in Kogi State. Resident doctors continue strike appeal against court's ruling. Don't rubbish yourself in 2023, PGF DG advises Jonathan. 2023, Tunabu is our southern Capone in APC says Akiri Dulu. And lastly on The Guardian, gunmen on the rampage in Southeast kill three policemen, touch INEC office, disperse poli political meeting. Okay, seems there are more updates on that story regarding the death of three policemen and the touching of an INEC office. And the writers say, police intensify efforts to arrest suspected killers of policemen in Nonicha. Court shuts down as Imo shuts down in Imo as lawyers protest killing of spokesmen. 26 security officials, 11 others killed by non-state actors in two weeks. All right, now moving to the Daily Independent. Manufacturers grown, shut down production lines. And that's with regards to forex scarcity. Worried dollar may exchange for 700 by December. Say forex situation has become a major driver of infl if inflation may cause job losses, higher poverty, and increased insecurity. Diplomats assault. Nigeria shies away from joining issues with Indonesia. And also telcos may taper off 3G, 4G uh, deployment as 5G race begins. Also on the Daily Independent, gunmen attack political meeting, threatened to stop 2023 poll in Enugu. Buhari directs incorporation of NNPC Limited, appoints Ararume board chairman. Middle Belt Forum alleges foul play in May Lafia's death. And also, Southern Governor's position um, may, after PDP, 
I'm not sure what this is. It uh, doesn't make, uh, well, okay, may alter, I beg your pardon, Southern Governor's position may alter PDP's zoning arrangement. Um, we've moved out election materials before Enugu office fire, says uh, INEC. That's uh, all we will take on the Daily Independent. Good morning, Mr. Kolawali. Thanks for joining us once again. Good morning, my brother. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right. Um, we probably should start with the death of Obadiah Ami Lafia, uh, former Deputy Governor of the CDN. Honestly speaking, when I heard about uh, his death, it was a shocking experience for me. I felt highly rattled and worried. I was also confused. Here is a man, one of the best of us. PhD, I think, from this Oxford or Cambridge. Okay. And uh, being a deputy governor of the CDN at work in African Development Bank. That is a man who will be very useful to us as a nation in finding solutions to the economic crisis that we have in our hands. For him to die, this kind of very cheap death uh, belittles all of us as our people. And then when you marry his death, with the death of Yinka Uduma King, with the death of Dr. Dinoit Muhammad, and um, some of these other very critical critics of government, you begin to wonder what is happening. Will it be some untoward circumstances that has led to their death? Because sometimes, in some other clans, people don't need to put a gun in your head before they kill you. Sometimes, pressures are mounted on you, the security agencies will harass you. They will block your sources of income. They will restrict your movement. And by the time they pile all sorts of pressures on you, the possibilities are that you develop a high blood pressure, and then you have a heart attack, and then you die. Often now, too, nobody has given us any development with regard to the killing of Shoure's uh, uh, brother. My fear is that... Uh, and I pray that what we have in our hands with regard to the death of some of these government critics is not a state terrorism that is at play. But let's keep our fingers crossed. Let's see what the OSPI report will uh, reveal. And uh, let's see this opportunity to say our condolence to the families of Dr. Melafia, to the people of Southern Kaduna, and all the progressive elements in this country with whom he has teamed with to give us a better Nigeria. Okay, Mr. Kolawale. Um, one of the stories that have um, made the rounds across the paper is a security situation in the Southeast. Um, this one says, gunmen attack political meeting threatened to stop 2023 poll in Enugu. Uh, we saw that story on the Daily Independent. And also, when we look at the Punch newspaper, the story is also there as well. Uh, but we played a video earlier um, on the breakfast this morning um, showing that disruption of a political meeting. And um, the, the news is saying that these people are probably members of the IPOB, but we don't have that in good authority. But what really is your commentary regarding what's happening in southeastern Nigeria at the moment, regarding how far IPOP seems to be going and the violence in that region? Well, it will be presumptuous to say that it is a IPOP. There are all sorts of non-state actors in the country today who are feeling the impact of the injustice that the APC, uh, the PDP, and the entire ruling class have inflicted on all of us. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, IPOB has never owned up to any of the killings that are taking place in the Southeast. We have only been making guesses, assumptions, and they're presuming that these things are coming from IPOB. And even if it is coming from my port, the violence begins to uh, violence. Nobody has monopoly of violence. When you vow that you are going to deal with them in the language that they, 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 they understand, when you say they are a mere dot in the circle, when you say, look, deal with them ruthlessly, uh, and that's coming from very high quarters and all that, you should expect a reaction 
from the people that we are dealing with in a very, very uh, ruthless uh, uh, manner. I have said this time without number, the security people have no solution to what is happening in the Southeast, or if it is even the hype up that is behind it. They have no solution to that campaign. Military solution, security solution, killings and maiming of innocent people in the Southeast will not be a solution. We have tried that in the past. You remember when there was crisis in the Niger Delta? All the arsenals of the Nigerian military were deployed to the Niger Delta. Were they able to subdue the ragtag army that was assembled by Tompolo, that was assembled by Asari Tokubo? The answer is no. Simply because one war is one in the heart of men. It is not a weapon that you carry that determines whether you win a war or a struggle. It is your determination to be free, your determination to, to liberate yourself. It is your determination to say no to injustice. Look at what has happened in Afghanistan. Americans were there, the Europeans were there, and the Russians were there. And the ragtag Taliban army defeated the American army and sent them back in, in body parts and all that. It is for this reason we are saying, look, let us find a solution, a political solution to what is happening in the South. Let's know what the grievances of the Igbos are, the IPOs are, and all the others is going to the element in the South. Let's bring them to the round table. And there is, there will even be more or better if we organize a referendum in the South and find, or even all over Nigeria, to determine what direction all whom these people want to be associated with, other than destroy them, I mean, describing them as uh, a dot in the circle. Application of sledgehammer. So what is happening in the South will not be the solution. And I have been saying this out with our number. I have also written in the newspapers that look, the people in the houses have their new grievances that we should address. And that we should not use a sledgehammer to kill a mosquito. Yeah. I have also said this, that the security people appear not to be giving the executive arm of government the right advice. Why do I say this? When crisis or when situation degenerates to the level which is degenerating, like it is in the South East today, the security men are only the first casualties. Right, Mr. When the security begins to unravel and disintegrate, it is the army, it is the Mr. police, Kola, Wale, you, it is the uh, soldiers, it is the civil defense that will force this in the Yeah, Mr. Kola, And they will be the one force of also bring in other... the And that is the reason why you see now soldiers are being key. Policemen are being killed and war are you? Mr. Kolawole, can you hear they us? We don't have the courage to advise the executive arm of government on the need to apply, on the need to use civil means to solve the problem in the southeast. All right. Mr. Kolawole, let's um, move away from the southeast and then talk all, um, a little on the um, value-added tax controversy, which has continued. Um, uh, Katsina yeah. State Governor has come under criticism from um, Akiri, um, Rotimi Akiri Dululu and, and a few others, um, including the Lagos State Governor. Um, concerning his views on value added tax, uh, where do you see this going? And you know, the FIRS also seeking uh, help from the National Assembly. How do you see this playing out? Yeah, <laughs> the FIRS move is uh, surprising to me simply because you don't uh, change the rules in the middle of the game. Now that the court has made a ruling. And the, the ruling is not in your favor. You are now rushing the appeal to the National Assembly to make FIRS the sole collector of uh, a VAT. That won't work. Nobody is going to allow that take place because you are simply changing the rules in the middle of the game. The injustice with regards to VAT has been going on for too long. And thank God for Governor Wike who has had the courage to approach the court. And that is a simple way to handle the situation. And the court has ruled in its favor. They will not slide on the federal government and the FIRA to pay the rulings of the court and allow the state to collect that and then they pay a percentage to uh, the federal government, also the federal and revenue. Look at what is happening in a place like Lagos, for example. All the facilities in Lagos, virtually all the tribes in Nigeria are here. Then you also go to a place like Rivers, Portacourt, and other. Virtually all the sites are there. And then the facilities there are being run down. The federal government is not giving them any special concession like Abuja. 
and figured out to handle the influx of people into some of these places. So how did they do it? When that comes in, you take all of the vats and then distribute it in an inequitable manner and then leave these people, uh, these uh, comes, I mean, these states to be deteriorating. They don't do it. And when people like Masari begin to talk the way they are talking, and then Baba Ahmed begin to talk the way they are talking, it means that they know that they are perpetrating injustice, and they want to hold on to the unmerited advantage that they have over the rest of the country. And when they also speak the way Amana they speak, they are believing that they have the monopoly of a violence, that they can only ride the rough shot over the rest of us as a nation. That is not going to hold. It is not population. It is like I also said earlier, it's not the weapon that you carry, that you make you subdue the other tribes in Nigeria. If the other tribes in Nigeria say, look, we're not going to take any of this. There's nothing you can do. What is the population of this? Uh, when you compare with the Arabs, the Arab neighbor who surround them, as the Arabs in their million been able to subdue the 8 million Israelis that they have been fighting over the ages, so they, 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 they know that they say no, and people like Masari and Baba and Meshu stop provoking and stoking the fire of war and by beating the drum of war that they are beating with regards to all the unmerited advantage that the section of the country has been getting over the years. Look at the petroleum industry bill. 30% of what you earn is going to be used to start prospecting for oil in an arid region that uh, is not even likely to be able to produce oil. Because the searching for oil in the north now for the past 30 years. And we have not been able to find anyone in commercial quantity. And you are here marking whopping 30 percent to be prospective for oil in the north. You didn't hear mark 30 percent to clean up Ogoni land, to clean up uh, all the places where oil has polluted and all that. I see it. I, I am convinced that the South, the state governors, and then the Southern states will win this war uh, with regards uh, to VAT. If you say you don't want to alcohol sold in your area, then don't take the money, the VAT that comes from alcohol. Um, the headline on the Daily Independence is about forex scarcity. And it's talking about how this is affecting manufacturers, saying some of them are shutting down their production line, and that people are worried that by December, Naira to the dollar will be about 700 Naira to 1,000 1, Naira to a dollar. Um, I want us to analyze this vis-a-vis -vis what the CBN governor um, has said about Aboki FX and platforms that he says are trading in illegal FX. Where do you think the problem might be coming from? Is it from these um, people who are publishing rates that are seen on the black market? Or do you think the federal government and the CBN should have had a tighter grip of the situation before it deteriorates this way? Hey, honestly speaking, Mr. Nefeli's understanding of the crisis in our hands is very, very shocking to me. The people who are doing this are book FX and all that. What do they do? They merely publish the rate at which the CBN sells foreign exchange and what is sustainable in the open or the so called popular black uh, market. Uh, what is wrong with that? Eh? The CBN has in the past been making money for it directly available to some of these BDCs to sell in the open market. We have not been able to control that area. In fact, it can be described as a legalized, as a normal business for anybody to do in this country. So why are you raising use and cry? Part of the challenges that we have with foreign exchange in this country is coming directly from the CPS. The little that they have, the insiders in there, the directors we allocate to their friends, to their companies and all that, who will take it to the black market and sell us and make money at exorbitant rates without doing anything. You remember former Emir of uh, Kano, Sanusi had raised this issue before, that some people don't do anything. All that they do is to apply to the CBN for forex, and the forex is made available to them. And then after some time, when the price have gone up, they take it to the black market and sell, and become millionaire overnight. That is the area that the CBN should be looking at, and not uh, a booking uh, uh, effort. Furthermore, here is a country that is not producing anything. All the industries are shut down. Oil is no longer selling the international market. Is it not what you produce and you sell internationally? 
that will bring you uh, foreign exchange. What is Nigeria selling internationally now? Nothing. We've actually importing everything, including toothpick. And we expect the United to be strong. More importantly, it would appear to me that this is repeating itself. When President Mohamed Buhari was a military head of state between 1983 and 85 and all that, this was how the Naira collapsed. Because it doesn't appear to me that he understands how to manage an economy. My right. father was a casualty of what happened at that period in time. He was doing very good business with Italians, with Germans and all that in the area of textile and building materials. All right, Mr. Kola Immediately, Ole. the foreign exchange uh, uh, was destroyed and the Naira collapsed at that period in time and all that. But the funny partner that my father used to deal with, they refused to deal with him anymore. Because it was difficult to transfer money to those funny partners in those days because the foreign exchange was even not available in the country. And there are all sorts of restrictions in that area. All right. Um, Mr. Kola Ole, I think we'll have to wrap up here. Um, thank you very much uh, for your analysis, as always, on Mondays. And um, uh, we wish you a very interesting week ahead. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Sir. We are in serious trouble. Go and write it down. Hmm. Very soon, the Naira will be like the Zimbabwe dollar. It will be like the former Ghana city, oh, in which you not. need millions of Naira to buy ordinary tomatoes. All right. That's where we'll be wrapping up. Uh, we'll take a short break. And when we come back, we'll be telling you things that happened on this day in history many years ago. I'm going back to the year 2003 in the Maldives. And I'm going back to the year 2007 in the U.S., where there was a massive protest against racial injustice. Stay with us.